So far we've seen a whole bunch of features of testing library. We've seen how you can mount a function using render. We've seen how you can use screen.getByRoll to find something in an accessible friendly manner. We've seen custom matches, for example, to be disabled. We've also seen how you can fire events like fireEvent.Update. And we've also seen fireEvent.Click to click on a button. Finally, we've seen how we can assert against emitted events and that's working just fine as well. I did look into this TS ignore. It turns out it's pretty complicated to be able to correctly type those events. We will eventually hopefully get to this, but at the moment it's it's not typed. So you do have to use TS ignore, unfortunately. However, I do think this will be fixed in the future. So keep an eye out for that. If you want to continue learning, there's tons of resources out there. Testing library is pretty big, so you will have to go through and read the documentation. But the best thing I've found is just the examples directory inside the view test, you, testing library source tests. You can see there's many, many different tests here that show you how to do different things. One that I was looking at earlier is this one here called disappearance. It tests using vshow and it has a very cool method called wait for element to be removed. And this is kind of a nice way to wait for an element to be removed with vshow. It's very readable and expressive. Another test I refer to quite frequently is this one here. It's called fire event and it shows you how to do all the different kinds of events you might like to fire, including things like keyboard events with key down, it has focus events, form events, drop down selects, pretty much everything you can think of. So definitely go ahead, check out these uh, examples here and see all the different things that testing library can do. One other thing I'd like to show you is this debug method. You can do screen.debug. And what this is going to do is just show you the current state of the DOM. And that's going to let you debug things sometimes. By dropping it here, I can see the current state of the DOM at that point and see what's going on. And this can be very useful for debugging errors or figuring out what is going on. One other thing I'd like to highlight is the testing library view is built on top of view test utils. What this means is you can use almost all of the mounting options you would expect to be able to use. For example, global is available here. And inside of this, I can do something like mocks or I can do something like stubs and stub out a component. There's also many other options in here. We can pass down data and all that kind of thing. So if you've used view test utils before, you'll able, be able to use most of that knowledge here as well by just passing down the usual mounting options that you would normally be using. You won't find this as useful here, uh, primarily because testing library provides all of its different functionality in different ways by using the screen methods such as get by role and these custom selectors in here. However, one thing I do find pretty useful still is global and inside of here by using stubs. The reason I find this useful is because there's no such, uh, no such feature in testing library like a shallow mount. Everything is always a full mount. And if you have a very large complex component that's causing you problems, you might like to use stubs to remove that component so you can continue writing your tests. Other than that, I did look into this TS ignore error down here. It turned out it is fairly complex to type this correctly. We will probably get to this eventually, but at the moment it's not typed. So the only way to write your tests using TypeScript is by using TS ignore. It's not really the best, but it is what it is. And if you have some time on your hands and you know TypeScript quite well, maybe you can be the one to contribute the fix to allow this to be typed correctly. Other than that, if you'd like to see more in-depth examples, I did write a book recently called Design Patterns for Vue.js. We use testing library throughout the book and see many different things that it can do. If you want, you can go ahead and download the example. It has some ex uh, example chapters using testing library. And we also have a chapter called Testing Forms. And that's going to show you some more complex features and some uh, best practices for testing your forms using testing library. Anyway, I think that brings us to the end of this series. The best way to continue learning is definitely going through these examples and seeing how everything is done. And that's going to show you different techniques that you can use to test your view components. I'll see you in the next series.